in East Africa, the Arabs have already disgraced Islam. They had started a slave trade 600 years before the European. And this, this slave trade, after they lost Spain, preying on nations in Africa, had drained Africa of so much time and energy and resources and organization, the Africans now could not mount an offense against Europe. Now we see the enemies that we, the Arabs that we had installed in Spain in the Mediterranean, because the military arm was African, turning on us. Now this is bigger than my skimpy explanation because every ally we ever had has turned on us when it was his or her convenient to do so. Left are right, and there is no exception. Now, the Arabs have turned on the Africans, moved down from North Africa and destroyed the great nation states in inner Africa. Now they would increase the slave trade along the coast of West Africa, the Portuguese and the Spaniards. Africa is in a bind now. East Africa is controlled by Arab slave traders. North Africa is controlled by Africans and Arabs returning from the conquest of Spain now that they've lost Spain. West Africa is arguing among themselves because they can't sell their family dispute. They will make a, a, a mistake by inviting the Portuguese to arbitrate their family dispute. Now, I've said this before, if you didn't learn anything from Godfather 1 and 2, <laughs> you never, absolutely never, invite an outsider to settle a family dispute. Never. Sober up old drunken Uncle Willie. <laughs> Let him settle it. But it must be somebody from within the family. Now the African is in a bind by the European. Now let us explain something that a whole lot of people have got misconceptions about, whether the Africans had slavery before the Europeans. In the European sense, no. Servitude is not slavery. They had worse servitude here in the United States, whites against whites. Many times the Africans <laughs> in wars or difficulties would capture other African groups. These groups would have to work their way out of indenture, either tending cattle or doing something. Some groups built up a surplus of labor. The Africans had no big ships to take from Africans down the coast. So he knew a king further down who needed some labor. Now that the Portuguese are there, he hired some of the Portuguese to take these Africans from one part of Africa and another. Now the European is interpreting this as being the African was in the slave trade. The African was not in the slave trade and you let people beat you over the head with nonsense because you have not studied African culture to understand that the nature of African servitude one to the other had no relationship to the slave trade, that the slave trade was the greatest holocaust, the greatest drainage on a people in the history of the world. Africans had no ships that he could connect three continents and even if the African was in the slave trade, he could not have brought it off. He didn't have a ship that would hold 100 people along the coast. Most of big fishing boats and river boats. So he could never have brought off anything as massive as the Western slave trade. Could 
couldn't have done it if he wanted to. Didn't have the facility anyway. I am not saying Africans were right in imprisoning their slave, their, their, in holding their prisoners of war and making their prisoners of war work for them. Well, that's better than killing them, but I'm saying that they made a symbolic mistake and a tactical mistake when they hired the Portuguese to take captives from one part of Africa to the other and gave the Portuguese the illusion that they were in the same trade and had the same intentions for enslavement as the Portuguese. That was a mistake. It was a mistake because we did not know the European culture and we did not know the European mentality. Didn't know it then, don't know it now. Otherwise, you would behave differently. The Africans came from a society that was collective. The European came from a society that was individual. Two kinds of temperaments, two different people. Now, in the Western world, you have become selfish, closed-door individuals. You get in your lonely room to think of something to tell your analyst, but if you had some friends, you wouldn't need any analyst. Because African society was so open, if you couldn't talk to anybody else, you can talk to the village gossipers, who was always available. That was a good drain off. <laughs> But we, we, we became a different people in this bind. All right. If the concept of slavery was starting in the world, and was a going concern among the Arabs 600 years before the Europeans, and if there were so many people in the world why the choice of the African as against those other people collectively more numerous than the African? The question is both ancient and current. Why is Africa more exploited right now than any other continent? Why do people willing to fight Africans and not willing to fight others? Why does Israel get more aid than all the African nations in the world put together? One nation and the total population of the Jews. The total world population is less than one half of the black population in the United States. Why do they get so much attention, you get so little attention? They got their political thing together, you haven't got yours together. They got their religious thing together and their cultural thing together. Religion and culture are servants of a people and they convert it to service. With you, religion is religion. You don't make enough demands from anything, especially the people who take up your time and your resources. We are the true believers. We out Muhammad, Muhammad, out Pope to Pope. We believe in things in their purest form. They go to the right or the left. They say, go to the center. We go to the center. So now we become the victims of our own culture as the needs of Europe began to expand. Now, let's look at the beginning of the tragedy.